Thank you so much for staying with us. Today has been a very unusual day, but in the spirit of growth mindset, we move on. So our guest is now with us. Taiwo Akinlami is a social development lawyer, co-founder Power Parenting Company, a parent's right to social protection advocate and publisher. Akinlami is arguably Africa's foremost child protection thinker and practitioner, being the founder and principal of Taiwo Akinlami Child Protection Academy. His unique philosophy and teachings on family strengthening, child protection, and related matters have been well received in over 133 countries. Akin Lami is also a prolific writer, poet, and blogger. Thank you, Taiwo. Thank you for joining us. Are you there? Can you hear me? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with you tonight. Awesome. Uh, thank you for, for the great show that, that you have. We, we enjoy it every day. Well done. Thank you so much. So it's important for us as we discuss mindsets, um, and particularly amongst our youth, what we have seen um, from uh, the NSARS protests back in uh, 2020, in October of last year, we can see that the youth of today are in a state of agitation. And as an expert in that space, I'd like you to speak a bit to us about the mindset of today's youth. What does it say about us as Nigerians? Well, um that uh, thank you for that great question i think that um the mindset of today's youth is um is a mindset of uh commitment to change agitation and the rest of that now by the by you know for every mindset there's an author of a mindset there is the there is the objective and the end that the author wants to see now if you look at the way nigerian the nigerian state is structured um, there is a commitment to deprive an average Nigerian uh, a mindset of progress, a mindset of growth, a mindset of development. You look at that from the way our educational system is structured. Educational system is structured to teach us to follow instruction, never say no, uh, always say yes. Educational structure punishes innovation punishes um, advancement, punishes a commitment to be different. And so the way it is structured, we are supposed to go to, we are supposed to follow, we are not supposed to cause any type of disruption. Young people, that's what young people, that's what the, the, the Nigerian state expect. And unfortunately, parents have eaten into that bait, you know, uh, they just keep uh, uh, giving children instruction. But what has happened is that there's a third force. It's called the internet. It's called the new media. It began to educate our young people beyond the, the latitude that is allowed by structured education. And so because of that, our young people are now more exposed. They can see what is going on in other times. They can see how young people all over the world respond to situations. And that has impacted the way our young people are thinking today. And I think it is commendable. Absolutely. And, and we're starting to see and yield the benefits of that. I love the fact that you talked about the internet. So we can actually say that the internet is shaping the mindset of our young people today. And it's influencing their attitudes and behaviors. As we can see now, there's that resistance and pushback to authority. I'd like to come in here, um, bring Tammy in here. Tammy, can are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, I'll let you go ahead. Okay, so thank you very much for coming, Mr. Kinlami. So my question is about, um, I find that usually environment is a, is a big factor when it comes to shaping one's mindset. And, you know, people of the same age who grew up in different places have different exposures, different levels of exposure. So, I mean, what, what do you think about this, the place of environment? And if a person has been shaped, especially from childhood to some extent, and you start to see some negatives, you know, influence you because of your environment, what is the next step? What is the way forward? Well, I think that um, what we call environment in this instance will be relative mm -hmm. in the sense that um, um, our environment now, to define our environment, we, we must take into cognizance the impact of the new media, the impact of social media, the impact of the of the first, fourth estate of the realm, which used to be digit, which used to be analog, but is now digital, and that has a major role to play. Because you see, when you talk about the development of a child, there are four institutions that have influence on the child. You have the family, 
you have the community, you have the state, then you have the international community. Now, what has happened is that there was a monopolization in terms of environment at the level of the family and the community. Now, now, now you could determine what you wanted children to be exposed to. You know, by virtue of the fact that you were in control of TV, uh, you were in control of radio, you were in control of control of a whole lot of things that children were exposed to. But with now, and if we are looking at today's youth, remind you, United Nations defines a youth as anybody below the age, between the age of 14 and 24. 14 and 24. That is a youth, according to United Nations. Don't mind religious organizations who put 35-year-old, 40-year-old people as youth in churches and in mosques and all of that. It's an aberration. According to United Nations, upon research, a youth is anybody below the, between the age of 14 and 24. And when you look at that, these are children that are born in the digital age, particularly between the year 2000. The year 2000 and now is called, it's called digital age. It's called, you look at what we call in a fourth industrial revolution, the internet of things. There's no way we can discuss environment today without discussing the impact of the internet. What has happened is that the tool of influence has been taken away from the primary and secondary custodians of children. Now, the primary and uh, custodians of children and the secondary custodians need to be deliberate if they are going to be in control of the instrument of influence, which is, which, you know, when we were born, I'm 50 years old, when I was born, my parents had control of the kind of information I could, be, I, could be, I could be exposed to. Even at that level, there was still a leak. Somebody dropped the ball one way or the other. We were exposed to the things we could not be exposed to. Now, we were born with, curios we were born with curiosity also, but our parents were able to they, they manage into error the power of that curiosity. But today, that is not the case. Now, children are born, and the tools of curiosity were, were the, the tools of curiosity was waiting for them. So they were born into those tools, and they began to engage those tools early in life to the point that they can manipulate it beyond the control and the dictates of their parents and their secondary caregivers. So you find a bunch of young people that are independent, a bunch of young people that are asking questions, a bunch of young people that will not take no for an answer, a bunch of young people that will always ask the question, why, why? Don't put the cup there, why? You must go to school, why? You now have a bunch of young people that the Nigerian state and the Nigerian community is not ready for. Because we are used to co-toying, we are used to following. So anybody who asks question is considered a rebel. Meanwhile, asking question does not make you a rebel. Asking question means you have a mind of your own. So the challenge is this: it's good that we, are, we say today is what thinking day. What we have been doing is to teach children what to think, what to think. But what the I what the me. yes. I apologize. I mean, I apologize. I just wanted to put some context to my question because I, okay. I noticed that there's a lot that you have said which has been very helpful, but, you know, it's been broader. So let me just give an example so that it helps you explain my question better. So, for example, you know, you hear a lot of Nigerian youth, you know, a lot of us, you know, talk about how that, you know, you hear things like, oh, really, what has the nation really done for me? You know what I've, I've had to do this i've had to do this when i compare it with other nations i find that oh they've done so so and they've provided this and this for their citizens and you now hear things like really there's a, a need to think about yourself so it's more self more of what will i do for myself what can i do for myself and my family how am i going to you know possibly japa you know in, in you know and just leave and <laughs> you know things like that they're talking about self so now, my question now is that if you find that you find that this is actually a result of your environment, somebody who never went to maybe get hospital or get security and welfare or any of those such things would likely think in this way. And, you know, it's really not the person's fault because that's an environment, I mean, a geographical environment in this context now. So what I'm saying is that with respect to nation building, okay, now, nation do you think that, that yes, respect to nation do you think there's any possibility that our mindset would be influenced positively again so that we we'll still begin to think about how to go forward do you think there's a possibility and how okay because okay. you know there's, there's a, a possibility the possibility is already demonstrated in the fact that 
In the month of October last year, some young people challenged this system. The way the system has not been challenged before. Some young people challenged the system to its roots, and the system was scared. The system was afraid. And so that is a proof that there's a crop of young people. And it is also important to know that change does not happen by the multitude. Change happens by a few that end up influencing the multitude. So for the rest of us who may still feel that um, this nation has done nothing for us, yes, it's understandable. Because when you look at the fact that um, there is no kind of profession that you can be involved in in Nigeria today that takes you out of the poverty line. In the developed climate, there are kind of profession that you are involved in that takes you out of the poverty line. So it's understandable. And the, the, the mindset of the majority, I agree with you, is the fact that this nation has not done anything for me. Let me do something for myself or get out. But the so, truth of the matter, again, is this. If we go that way of saying that the nation has not done anything for us, and we, because of that, decide to do everything for ourselves, we will have been guilty of what we are accusing the nation of. Any, anybody who is listening to me right now, is a is one of the might be one of the privileged few. We have to take responsibility. So there's always a, a change is an ever present possibility for any human being who is ready to take responsibility. So I feel that this kind of conversation will shape we shape an opinion. We get us to see things differently. The kind of question you are asking, we also we, we also help our young people to see things differently. So I think there can be a change as we keep trying. But the fundamental thing is this: the change. I want to point out the change has already occurred in the sense that young people today are asking questions. Go to Twitter, go to Instagram, go to Facebook, go to LinkedIn. And even on the streets or even in the classroom, young people are beginning to ask questions. And as we continue like that, it might not take the majority to save our nation, but the minority uh, we all, we surely do something. So, so Taro, I'd like to thinking. just jump in there. So you've, you've actually touched on something that is very key because a lot of everything we've said so far has been focused more on the youth. And our leaders, it's the, the disparity between the mindset, um, I think we can agree, the mindset of the youth and the mindset of the leaders is a source of a lot of the issues that we're seeing today that you know culminated in the events of October. But you touched on something that's really key. We are living in a, the, the youth of today is a white generation. They ask questions. Now, if we as parents have learned to answer those questions and we're learning to engage our children more, how can our leaders turn around and do the same thing? Because if you look at the age gap, like you said, the youth in Nigeria, what is defined as youth is an aberration. So what we want to see is what is it now that our leaders can do to start to turn around and close that gap so that we can actually move this nation forward together as a collective? Okay, can I make a very, very uh, sad statement? Mm. I think to a very large extent, our leaders are presently irredeemable in their mindset. Oh, they are irredeemable. And I will explain what I mean. The reason why I say they are irredeemable is that they've, they've taken a course of action since 1960 consistently, and there's no consequence. When Once you do things against the norms and the tenets of the system that set you up or the objective of the system, a government exists for the purpose, according to the Nigerian constitution, the defective 1999 constitution says the welfare and the security of the people shall be the primary aim of government. Since 1960, we have hardly had that. Mm -hmm. Leaders have continued to, do, to ride rough shore on the rights and the hopes, yearnings, and aspiration of the people, and they have almost, or, or, or they have gotten away with it. Haven't gotten away with it for so long, they have come to a place where they think that, that that there's, they can do and undo and nothing will happen. We still read about it. One of the stories we shared before we started, a, a hotel was allegedly locked up. And because the hotel belonged to the high and mighty, allegedly, one of the persons who is supposed to respect the law of this land went to the place to try to break the hotel unlawfully. What, what, what does a private citizen, what do you do to a private citizen if a private citizen does that? So for me, the present crop of leadership in Nigeria are irredeemable. Why are they irredeemable? It's not because God cannot redeem them. It's, it's not because uh, we should not preach the message of redemption to them to change their ways. It's because they've gotten away with so much. 520 something billion dollars have been stolen from Nigeria since 1960. According to Chatham House, it's in the news. But, but some people stole that money. 
and it is in the news. What has happened to them from generation to generation, from change of leadership to change of leadership? Nothing has happened. So since, it, see, if somebody continues to do something wrong and there's no implication, the heart of the person becomes seared with hot iron and the person becomes irredeemable. I don't think we should look at today's leaders. We should be looking at the youth because the youth also are the ones that will take over from this point, they are already, already taking over. Youth are already in leadership. Leadership is not tomorrow. It's to focus on these people, young people, and see what we can do with them in changing their mentality, in correcting. You see, some of these young people also have picked the way of life of, of the politicians. Now, Africa is the only place where you become rich by virtue of the fact that you are holding a political office and nobody asks you any question. So for me, I don't think we should waste too much energy on our leader. On our present crop of leaders, we should continue to agitate, get them to see why, you know, because sometimes your mindset may not change for you to allow, to allow change. Mm -hmm. Your mindset may not change for you to allow change. This, the, the forces of change might be, become so powerful that they force change on you. Because you see, there are two types of things that happen in life. It is either you, 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 you change, it is either you, you, you happen to change, or change happens to you. Yeah. And when Absolutely. change happens to you, it means it's beyond your control. So what we need to, be, we need to begin to, to do now is to, is to step up a level of agitation to keep our leaders on their, on their toes, not focusing on their change of mind. That is an Akulian task. Then to focus attention on our young people, helping them to understand. And I'll give you a clear example. I went to talk to a group of young people in, in, in Solo, Lagos and when I was talking to them, I asked them the question, how many of you love Nigeria? None of them stood up. I was, I was in the midst of 70 children. None of them stood up. And their thinking was that, how will I love Nigeria? These are, these are children from underserved communities. Uh, there was COVID. We, we couldn't go to school. 46 million Nigerians could not go to school as a result of COVID. They didn't have access, according to UNICEF. 36 million people doing adult education could not go to school. So these young people said, well, we couldn't go to school. Our parents did not have a job. What is Nigeria doing for us? And so they said, they did not love Nigeria. So I told them that, yes, your agitation is correct. Your disenchantment is correct. Your anger is correct. But what we cannot do is to hate our country. We must make up our mind to love our country. And I made them to understand our country is not the space. Our country is the people. Love your, your neighbor. Love your classmate. If you are good in a subject and other people are not good, teach the other person. Make it a point of duty to be good to your neighbor. When you begin to cultivate that attitude, you are saying that we are different from our leader. But if we choose to say we want to follow their way, they don't love us, we are not, also not going to love our neighbor, what happens? We perpetrate the same thing we are agitating against. We cannot perpetrate the same thing we are agitating against. So my advice is that young people need to arise. We need to, not only that they are not going to arise on their own, we need to mobilize them. We need to work with them. We need to teach them. We need to let them see. You know, for example, somebody is born in 1999, born into this present crop of the type of democracy we are practicing now. Such person has not seen service. Such person has not seen selflessness. Such person has not seen sacrifice. Such person has not seen a commitment to state of affairs. 13.5 million Nigerian children are out of school. Many people are still practicing open defecation. In, particularly even in Lagos. Many young girls do now cannot even buy menstrual, uh, uh, cannot buy a uh, 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 um, pad or uh, 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 what, yeah. what menstrual, um, whatever. Because, <laughs> yes, because they are poor. They are using newspaper. They are using, they are, they are using, they are using rags, even to today. So those people don't have a sense of what government can do. And they also will be thinking, if socialization is correct, that I just need to get there. All I need to do is to get there. I will also sort out myself. But we need to change. We need to begin to tell them what government is all about. The education in the school system is not helping. The other day, I was listening to my my nephew. He, he was he was going. He was in, a, in an online school, and they were telling him in Nigeria, when you become 18, you go and register. When you register, you go let voters card on the day of election. You so go there. Child, you vote, they count the election. Your leader is elected. I'm just I going said, to wow, jump. I'm just going to jump Nollywood. in here. Thank you so much. I mean, you have said so much, and unfortunately, we have run out of time. I think there is so much that we can unpack 
in this topic that is mindset and I'm sure that we're going to come back to talk about this on ways because we really do need to ensure like you've said the old is obviously obsolete the strategy should be to create the new and force the populace or encourage the populace to, to onboard that new and it will become our normal so thank you so much for joining us today as always 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 you always give us good insights on ways so thank you for joining us ways was birthed from the need to inform inspire influence lives towards action and this year we started our csr focus on curbing unemployment in nigeria if you are a company please partner with us by allocating internship slots and if you're a job seeker keep watching ways and follow us on all our social media handles this will be an all year round engagement so tell a friend to keep all eyes on ways in case you missed today's quote here it is once your mindset changes everything on the outside will change along with it absolutely agree with that so we'll see you tomorrow at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation to your screen have a good evening